Yo, what's good? Bills Mafia, the Rev here. And you are now tuned in to episode 6 of Rated Rev, right here on the Buffalo Fanatics Network. All right, guys, look, you already know what to do before we go any further into the show. If you are not yet plugged into the Buffalo Fanatics Network, do me this favor right now. Like, comment, and subscribe to the channel with all bell notifications on. Okay, now let's dig in. What's good, Bills Mafia? Grace and peace to you, my brothers and sisters. This is your man, Rev Rhodes here, and I am glad to be with you on another edition of Rated Rev, brought to you by, of course, and as always, the Buffalo Fanatics Network. Look, I pray that you guys are having a fantastic start to your week so far, and I am glad and honored that you chose to spend your time with your man, Rev. That really means a lot to me, and I hope that This time that we spend together, though it may be brief, will provide you with some sort of solitude or even a way of escape from the mundane things of this life. And any time we get to talk about the Buffalo Bills is a great time indeed. And with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, let's get on with some news around the NFL. Buffalo Bills signed all-pro wide receiver Stephon Diggs to a four-year, $104 million contract extension with $70 million in guaranteed dinero. The Bank of Bean is always open for business, but the best deals take place after dark. The NFL is launching a developmental football camp in Ghana, Africa to provide a pathway for African players. Now, the program will be spearheaded by former New York Giants Super Bowl champion defensive end O.C.U. Umanyora, along with current Cleveland Browns linebacker Jeremiah owusu Kormor. Now, this is a huge step as the NFL expands its footprint while providing opportunities for potential players all around the world. So kudos to the NFL for making opportunities like this happen. Now, last but certainly not least, as you are more than aware of by now, the entire NFL world was stunned to find out that quarterback Dwayne Haskins passed away Saturday morning in a tragic, tragic accident. Now, as we send our our thoughts our prayers and our deepest condolences to the Haskins family and his loved ones. Will you please join me in a seven second moment of silence in remembrance of Dwayne Haskins. Mafia, can you believe that the NFL draft is only two weeks away? I mean, it seemed like it was just yesterday when free agency opened up and we were getting news about all the moves and signings that Brandon Bean was making. But now with only two weeks until the NFL draft, we are continuing in our Bills draft countdown talk with part three, El Numero Tres. And today we're going to talk about the linebackers. But we're going to rate them using emojis. Ah, let's dive in, baby. Okay, so now let's go through the, the linebacker position right now on the roster. Let's see who we have listed on the roster. So now I'm scrolling through it right now, and I'm taking a look at it. And here is what I find. We have, um, I just want to go in order here, okay? So we have, obviously, we've got Tremaine Edmonds, okay? We've got Matt Milano, of course. Um, We've got Joe Giles Harris. Uh, Keep on scrolling, keep on scrolling, keep on scrolling. 
We got Markel Lee on the roster. Tyler Matikiewicz. Uh, for some reason, they've got Von Miller listed as a linebacker, but we know he's playing defensive end. We've got Andre Smith. And I've, for some reason, I feel like I'm missing somebody. Am I missing somebody? I guess not. I guess not. If I'm missing somebody, Mafia, let me know. Put it in the chat. Okay? So let's go back. Okay? We've got Jermaine Edmonds, Matt Milano. Oh, there it is. It's Tyrell Dodson. How, how did I miss him? Tyrell Dodson. Okay? So we've got those. We got uh, uh, Tremaine Edmonds, Matt Milano, Tyler Matikiewicz, Tyrell Dodson, Markel Lee, um, Andre Smith. Okay? I believe that was all of them. That was all of them. All right, so now, but what I'm going to do is I, I'm just going to talk about what I believe to be the, the top four. Okay? Just the top four backers. All right? Because we know, we know, um, you know, a couple of them. I mean, they're they're special teams players, uh, role players, and 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 maybe just just this um, bottom of the roster depth guys, okay, and maybe even just camp competition. So let's go through the linebacker position right now. We're going to talk about um, these guys, and then at the end of it, we're going to rate them using emojis, okay? So stick with me, and I want to know your text, mafia. I want to know how you feel about a certain player. And I want to know at the end of it how you rate the entire linebacker position using emojis, okay? Not words, but emojis, okay? So now let's look, let's look at uh, player number one on the list in no particular order. This is Tyrell Dodson. Tyrell Dodson, okay? Now, as a core member of the special teams units, um, Tyrell Dodson played 67% of the special team snaps last year in 2021. Tyler Matikiewicz. Reggie Gillum, Tyron Jones, and Saran Neal were the only other players who registered more snaps than Dodson. Now, retaining his services uh, for one more year to keep the core special teams unit intact was crucial, I believe, by Brandon Bean and should only help this unit that was ranked second in the league in kickoff return average and third in punt return average, remain on top. Dotson, I like him. Um, I believe he is great for the special teams unit. Um, but, you know, he, he had some spot duty at times um, uh, on the defense, in def you know, when he got, he got a chance to, to actually play. And he, he actually played pretty well. So, I, I like how we signed him. Uh, we got him on. Uh, uh, we got him. I think we got him for a year deal. Is that correct? You guys, correct me if I'm wrong. But I, but I think we signed him to a one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To a one more. To a one more. To a one year deal. So Tyrell Dotson is going to be on this team for a one year deal, and he is a core special teams player. And we're going to find out how important that is here in just a second as I talk about the number two guy, and that is Tyler Matikiewicz. Okay, now like Dotson, Big Red uh, is another core special teams player. Now, this is, however, the final year of Matikiewicz's current deal with the Buffalo Bills, um, who some fans even thought would be a cap casualty. Now, even my, now myself, I included, okay, because I even thought he was going to be a cap casualty. And in fact, when I would play the GM simulator on the Buffalo Fanatics app, right? BF app plug. There you go, baby. Um, and we're trying to create cap space because, you know, Brandon Bean was struggling. A lot of times when I was being the GM, the armchair GM that I am, man, I had to, you know, I was parting ways with Tyler Matikavich to try to save some cap. But it looks like the man has, has, has escaped being a cap casualty and he is on the roster at least uh, for the time being. And I believe that that is a great sign that he's still on the team because it shows the importance that Brandon Bean and the coaching staff places on special teams. Now watch this, especially considering that the Bills lost their former special teams coordinator, Heath Farwell. Nah, you may have forgotten about that, huh? You see? So while we were all just trying to cut this player and cut that player as a cap casualty, 
Brandon Bean, as smart as he is, along with the coaching staff, was like, look, we just lost our special teams coordinator in health and Heath Farwell, who's been on the team for a couple of years. So now we have uh, Matthew Smiley, who's taking the place, who was assistant special teams coordinator. So we got to protect him, and we're going to protect him by keeping the core unit intact. Man, that is an awesome move uh, by Brandon Bean and the staff. So let's see if Matthew Smiley can keep this unit atop the NFL and not make another finger quote execution error in the biggest game of the season. Moving on. Matt Milano, the guy my daughter loves. Yeah, I said it. She does. She likes Matt Milano. I guess he's good on my eyes. Every time, uh, you know, the Bills play, she's waiting to see Matt Milano. But anyway, I ain't giving her no more, no more time on this show talking about Matt Milano like that. Matt Milano, though, my guy. I am so glad. I don't know about you, Bills Mafia, how you feel about it. But I'm so glad to finally see Milano healthy again. We know that he has, you know, he has dealt with some injuries uh, the past um, year or two. But for the most part, last year, I mean, he remained pretty healthy for the first time, I think, since 2019. And by all accounts, when we look at what he did on the field, he did not disappoint. He ended last year with 86 combined tackles, 15 tackles for loss, three sacks, and six quarterback hits. Some people would even argue that Matt Milano could be the best linebacker on this team. I don't know who thinks that. But word on the street is that Milano is that dude. I don't know. You let me know what you think about Matt Milano. But I love him. I'm glad that he's with the team uh, for an extended period of time. He is the man. And now that leads me to the man of the hour. None other than, none other than, None other than <laughs> the Tremaine Edmonds. Guys, Edmonds is arguably the most controversial player on this current team. Not because of anything he, he has done off the field, right? We don't hear of anything that he's doing off the field. He ain't, you know, on drugs that we know of. He's not, you know, having any issues with the law he's not you know uh having run-ins with with uh women the wrong kind of run-ins if you know what i'm talking about no we no 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 he ain't controversial for none of that stuff because he's not doing any of that stuff he's simply controversial on this team solely because there's a faction of people who think that he's just not quite it He's just not what we expected, what we thought he would be by this stage in his career. After four years in the NFL, going into his fifth year, many are just, they, they just expected to see more out of Edmonds. Now, it also doesn't help that his contract or potential contract extension complicates matters, right? So now we have Tremaine Edmonds in going into his fifth year because Brandon Bean picked up his fifth year option. He's still extremely young, 23, 24, I think. And a huge contract is looming. It's looming. But before we get into that contract talk with Tremaine Edmonds, I've got to admit that I was kind of on that side as well, you know, of kind of like, you know, poo-pooing on Edmonds a little bit, you know, uh, wanting to see more out of him because I do, and I still want to see more out of Edmonds. But let's, let's, you know, let me get my feelings aside, okay? 
I'm going to be a grown man for a second. Now let's look at the numbers because numbers don't lie. Feelings are finicky, but numbers don't lie. So let's, let's, let's look at the numbers for Tremaine Edmonds, okay? Just last year alone, in 2021, Tremaine finished the year with 108 combined tackles. Seven tackles for loss. Now, granted, he got no sacks and only one quarterback hit. But Jermaine Evans is, is, is actually a tackling machine. Okay, and he does a lot for the defense. I, I, I admit that and I give it to him. He does a lot on this defense and a lot is asked of him. But if you look at Jermaine's career so far, in the four years that he's been in the league, he averages no less than 115 tackles a year. No less than six and a half tackles for loss. I mean, as he, he's, he's a productive NFL linebacker. I got to give him credit. I got to give him credit. I have been, you know, a, 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 a big critic of Tremaine Edmonds because I look at him sometimes and I'm like, man, you know, he looks kind of soft to be a middle linebacker. Okay, I'm just going to be honest. You know, but as I continue to, to, to learn more about his responsibilities on the defense, he's doing everything that they're asking of him to do. And he's doing it fairly well. I mean, he's doing it so good that what he's a what a two time Pro Bowler, two right? I know he's been to the Pro Bowl at least, at least twice. So he's getting recognition around the league for his play. Meanwhile, I'm up here in my feelings, thinking that you know he ain't all that. Tremaine is pretty good. Okay, he's above average. No, he may be. Slightly above, above average, if you know what I'm saying. Okay, I, let me let me give him his, his his let me give him his credit. Okay, I, what I like about Edmonds though is is that he has a lot of potential and he's got traits for days. I mean, six five, two fifty guys got thirty four and a half inch arms, pterodactyl arms, wingspan. Right, the guy can move. I think he ran like a four five forty. He's very athletic, sideline to sideline. The guy um, is 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 pretty good in in coverage when he goes into those into those 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 zones right taking tight ends um up deep into the zones i mean he, he he's good at what he does i gotta give him credit but where where, where yeah I, I guess where my knock is on him is 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 in the run support aspect of it right over pursuing um picking the wrong holes seeming a little timid not really wanting to smash offensive linemen and, and allowing them to get into his chest still as big as he is, you know. But at this stage in his career, can he improve upon those areas? I'm sure he can, um, but we'll see. There's, a, I mean, we'll, we'll see what happens, especially with the way the defensive line has been revamped this year. We will see what happens with Tremaine Edmonds. And guys, and look, as much as I criticize Edmonds, at the end of the day, I'm a Bills fan. I want all the Bills players to succeed. And excel on this team. I do. I, I genuinely do. Okay. So it's okay for me to criticize. It's okay for you to criticize. We're going to do it. It's okay. It's part of being a fan. Okay. But at the end of the day, I want him to succeed. That's what I want. I want him to do well. But, but as much as I want him to do well and all this kind of things, there is still, still something that's just kind of sitting and hovering over Edmonds. It's a large, looming question that needs to be answered. And so I'm asking you, Mafia, should Brandon Bean, a.k.a. Big Baller Bean, sign Tremaine Edmonds to a long-term deal or find his replacement in the draft and let him walk in free agency that's the question i'm posing to the mafia right now let me know your answer in the chat how do you feel what do you think should happen should bean sign tremaine edmonds to a long-term extension well Let's go even further into that discussion, okay? Remember, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to be a grown man right now. I'm trying to, 
you know, get out of my feelings and look at the numbers. Okay. Now, so let's look at the numbers. According to Spot Track, they compared Tremaine Edmonds currently um, when, he, when he, in talking about his, his market value, they compared him currently to the following players based on his age, their contract status, and statistical production. And this is who they came up with. Number one, C.J. Mosley for the New York Jets. He's 26 years old, signed a five-year, $85 million deal. Oh, my God. Five year, $85 million deal with approximately a $17 million average salary. $17 million average annual salary for CJ Mosley. Okay. The second linebacker they compare Jermaine Edmonds' value to is Zach Cunningham, 25 years old, signed a four year, $58 million contract with an average annual salary of $14.5 million. Okay, that's, that, that's a little better, all right? <laughs> than $17 million for five years, $85 million. Oh, my gosh. Anyway, number three was Miles Jack, a linebacker from the Jacksonville Jaguars, 23 years old. He is young, man, young, 23 years old, signed a four-year $57 million deal with $14.2 million in average annual salary. And lastly, it is Deion Jones, linebacker from the Atlanta Falcons, uh, 24 years old, and he signed the same deal as Miles Jack. Okay? So now, based upon, based upon that, those comparisons, SpotTrack calculated the market value for Tremaine Edmonds at four-year $55 million with an average annual salary of $13.8 million. I might as well be $14 million. <laughs> wow. Four year, $55 million, 14 mil average annual salary, give or take. And they ranked him, or they ranked that contract would be ranked sixth out of the inside linebacker contracts. And get this. Tremaine is 23 years old. Man, look, I, look, I, I have been one who, who, who is like, yo, I'm tired of playing the Oh, he's still young game. But, yo, let, we got to keep it 100. Bruh is 23. He is 23 years young. Still incredibly young. Incredibly young. And can he only get better? It is quite possible that Tremaine Edmonds can only get better. And in four years in the league, he's already made it to the Pro Bowl twice. Okay? Getting out of my feelings here. I'm getting out of my feelings. Let's look at some more numbers here. Now, if, you know, what Spot Track has, has, has valued Edmonds is true, or even in the ballpark, especially when they said that they ranked him sixth out of the inside linebacker contracts, Is Edmonds a top 10 or even a fringe top five inside linebacker in the NFL? What do you think? Because the contract they gave him or that they're valuing him for is sixth in the NFL in linebackers or inside linebackers. Sixth. So is Tremaine Edmonds ranked up there let's let's see what other people have to say about it okay now jeremy fowler of, of, of uh, espn 
he put out an article where NFL execs, coaches, and players ranked the top 10 linebackers for 2021. Now, full disclaimer here, this, this article that was written uh, was published prior to last year, prior to the season, okay? But now, when all was said and done, after, you know, they, they, they spoke, to, I think they spoke to like 50 um, NFL execs, coaches, and players, et cetera. And they got their averages of how they ranked them. When all was said and done, Tremaine Edmonds landed, watch this, number eight. Number eight. Number eight out of all linebackers in the NFL, Tremaine Edmonds, according to NFL execs, coaches, and players, they ranked him on average eighth place. Now, Let's listen at what's being said about him and in, in, uh, from other people around the NFL. Okay. Now, according to uh, Alex Reamer of Odyssey Sports, uh, in referring to Tremaine's league ranking, he said that an NFL coach said the following about him, and I quote, this guy is tough, very rangy against the pass, good instincts. Tough for us to deal with. An NFL coach, NFC NFL coach at that matter, said that Tremaine Edmonds is tough, he's rangy against the pass, he has good instincts, and he is tough to deal with. You see, this is I think this is good. This is a good practice for us to have because, especially for myself, okay, I, I realize that not everybody, you know, um, is in the camp that I that I was in, um, but I think it's good practice for us to 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 hear what other people around the league have to say about our players. Because sometimes you know our players are our players, and, and and maybe we can take for granted that some of the things that they do well, or we over criticize them, right? But when we listen to what other people think about them, we we get a a, a different perspective. And so I'm gaining a different perspective of, of Tremaine Edmonds, right? A different perception, I should say, of him and his value. So, hey, man, you know, this is progress, right? This is progress. You see, Rev ain't perfect. Now, let's talk about what Brandon Bean said. This is, this is if, I mean, it's important to, to know what other people are saying around the league, but now it's even more important to know what Brandon Bean, the own GM, has to say about him now this is what Bean said about a potential contract extension last may after picking up both he and josh allen's fifth year options and i quote josh's number is in the 20s because of a pro bowl tremaine has made a couple pro bowls he's pushing 13 talking about 13 mil now, you can't really be flexible with those cap numbers. So we've got to make sure that if we pick them both up, which we know he did, that we're going to have to that we're going to have close to thirty five million dollars in space in next year's cap. It's not watch this. It's not an ideal scenario from that to pick them both up and not extend them. So we're just going to have to figure it out. I'm sorry. So we just got to figure out how to make that work in our system. So Brandon Bean, last May, guys, last May, before he even picked up both Josh Allen and Tremaine Edmonds' fifth-year options, was already talking about giving him a long-term extension. And, ta- and as he was talking about picking up their options he said it's not an ideal scenario to pick up the both of their fifth year options and not extend them and he said so we just have to figure out how to make it work in our system so we know that he picked up the fifth year option on both players and we know that he extended josh allen right is tremaine Edmonds soon to follow. 
I mean, because to me, that sounded a whole lot like Brandon Bean is more than willing, more than willing to extend Edmonds. And I have been one to say, man, I don't think that he's going to sign or, 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 or invest that much money in the linebacker position when he's already paying Matt Milano. But on top of that, you add in a, a, a huge mega deal for Tremaine Edmonds. And we're talking about 14 mil per year, right? But it looks like Brandon Bean ain't scared of it. If it makes sense, if he can make it work in his system, it looks like Tremaine Edmonds is going to be here with us for the long term. Assuming, that is, he wants to be. Is Tremaine listening to the noise? Is he listening to people like myself who say, man, Tremaine, look, man, he he's soft. He needs to do better. Is he listening to that? Is he like, yo, Mafia ain't, you know, supporting me? I don't know. I don't know what Tremaine is thinking. But I guess we will find out soon enough. Okay? So now, Mafia, with all of that being said, okay, how do you rank the position? Oh, not rank it. How do you rate the linebacker position? Huh? How do you rate it? I want to know from you. I want Let me know your thoughts. Put it in the comments right now in the chat. How do you rate this linebacker position? And then at, on top of that, think about this. We still have a draft. Okay, we still have a draft. And I think... Could be wrong, but I think Brandon Bean may end up drafting him a linebacker at some point in the draft. Now, that's not to say that this particular linebacker is going to be Edmonds' replacement, though he could. We don't know. Or it could just be, you know, a depth option. Maybe he's looking for somebody to fill that A.J. Klein role. I don't know. We don't know. But we know Bean, you know, he likes to make sure he's insured and protected. Except at the quarterback position. But I digress. <laughs> okay. So, and then there's some good linebackers that might be available for us um, in this draft, especially, you know, round 25. But I'm not suggesting he draft a linebacker in the first round, maybe second round. I don't know. We'll see. But nevertheless, how do you rate that position? Now, how do I rate it? Because now I've, I've got, you know, a newfound, I guess, appreciation for Tremaine Edmonds. Um, I, I really do, man. And, and, and guys, when I said that earlier, I, I genuinely want him to succeed with us. I don't know. I mean, make that clear. I don't want him leaving anywhere else and all of a sudden exploding and becoming this all pro linebacker so I can eat crow. I don't want that. OK, I, I, right now I'll say I apologize right now. Look, I, look, I've been a little bit too harsh on Tremaine Edmonds. OK. I have. So how do I rate the linebacker position? Well, you know what? I'm going to rate it with that cool emoji with the shades on, baby. Because when I think about Matt Milano under contract, very good linebacker for this team. And then on top of that, you put Tremaine Edmonds, who I think that these two guys together make up a very, very good linebacking tandem um maybe not quite as 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 dynamic or as potent as uh Micah Hyde and and Jordan Poyer back there behind them but man Matt Milano and Tremaine Edmonds together are very good would I say they are as good as any linebacking duo in the NFL yeah probably so as good as any linebacking duo in the National Football League, especially when healthy and firing on all cylinders. So, and then you've got Tyler Matakavich, you've got Andre Smith, you got, you know, you got Tyrell Dotson, who I like. So you got the depth guys and the, and the special teams, the core special teams guys. Now, now we need to add probably some more depth because if Milano gets injured or Tremaine gets injured, you know, um, yeah, we may can, you know, throw in Dotson in there, but man, we probably would like to see a little bit more production um, and, and have a little bit more security at that position um, in the event of any type of injury that could happen to both of those starting linebackers. So 
yeah, I, I rate them with that cool emoji, man, with the shades. Because I'm I'm feeling I'm feeling pretty good. I'm feeling pretty good and pretty cool, you know, about about this position. I really am. And 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 I think that when you when you uh when you look at the moves that that being made, especially up front, I think I think we're gonna see. I think that's gonna pay dividends. You know, he made it a uh, he made a conscious effort. I should say that to revamp the defensive line, and he did that. And so with Tim Settle, Daquan Jones. And then you add in Von Miller. Look, I think our linebackers are going to be eating all day long. I do. I, I think they. I think they're going to be eating, man, all the day long. And 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 I can't wait for it. I can't wait for it. So I'm feeling. I'm feeling pretty cool about it. I'm feeling pretty cool about it. I think. I think we are. We, you know, we're in the driver's seat. We're chilling. We're doing very, very well at the linebacker position. But Mafia, let me know how you feel about it. How would you rate them? Using emojis, huh? I want to hear from you. Maybe I'm, uh, maybe I'm off base. Maybe I've kind of, you know, gotten a little too soft. You know, I don't know. Let me know what you think, and if I'm way off base or whatever the case may be. Okay, but anyway, mafia, look, that is my time. Um, thank you so very much for joining me here on another edition of Rated Rev, brought to you by the Buffalo Fanatics Network. And uh, stay tuned because next week we're going to go even further and dive into another position on the Bills draft countdown as we approach the NFL draft. Oh, I am so excited about that. But before we go, before I close, I just want to share a few words, especially in light of you know, the tragic situation that occurred this this weekend. And as you can tell, you know, I'm donning a Dwayne Haskins shirt in remembrance of him. But let me just share this with you. You do not know what will happen tomorrow. You don't know. I don't know. None of us know what's going to happen tomorrow. I mean, what is life? What is you? What is what is life? What is your life? It's all but a vapor that appears for a little time, and then vanishes away. So while we have this time on this earth right now, while we have life in our bodies, hold on to those things that are true and dear to your heart and savor what matters. This is Rev signing off. As always, grace and peace. God bless. And go Bills.